This morning with that breaking news as Pfizer's COVID vaccine has won permission for emergency use in the United Kingdom. Now this move makes Britain the first nation to begin distribution of the first vaccine whose effectiveness has been verified through extensive science and trials. The vaccine developed along with German partner BioNTech has already been tested in tens of thousands of people with research showing a 95% effective rate. The nation's Department of Health says that the vaccine will be ready for use across the UK next week. So from early next week, we will start the program of vaccinating people against COVID-19 here in this country. Uh, and uh, as we know from earlier announcements, this vaccine is uh, effective. Uh, the MHRA have approved it as clinically safe um, and um, um, we have a vaccine. So it's very good news. No kidding. Healthcare workers and nursing home residents will be the first groups to get that UK vaccine. Now, Oregon reported a new single day record for COVID deaths yesterday. 24 more Oregonians have died and the previous high for deaths in one day was 21 and we hit that last week. Tuesday's reporting brings the total number of deaths in the state to 936. Here is the daily case curve. The state reported a 1,233 new cases of coronavirus. A little less than half of those came from Multnomah, Clackamas, and Washington counties. Oregon is shifting to a new set of COVID restrictions this week. They'll be different county by county, depending on how fast the virus is spreading. The governor's office released this assessment of each county's risk level. This is slightly different than the map from last week. 25 counties, including all of the Portland metro area, are in the extreme risk category. Those are in red on this map. Hood River and Morrow counties have been newly added to that list. Orange is high risk, yellow is moderate, and green is low. Now, if you go to KGW.com, you can get a closer look at the map and a list of all the restrictions at each risk level. Those restrictions, by the way, start on Thursday. Well, the doctors that we've been talking with believe the COVID surge is only going to get worse. I think a lot of people, Brenda, are wondering what kind of post Thanksgiving spike we're going to see. And those doctors we talked to say we can expect that spike here in the next two to four weeks. They're also concerned right now about hospital space and staffing. So at Peace Health Vancouver, they're expecting a 20 to 40 percent increase, 20 to 40 percent increase in cases. So to get ready for that, they've set up a section of the hospital specifically for COVID patients. Right now they have 42 patients there with the virus. Peace Health has a total of 340 hospital beds. Right now, 55 are currently available. They also have a contingency plan in place for emergency room and intensive care physicians. Uh, so that if, God forbid, one of them became ill or their family member uh, became ill with COVID, that uh, we would uh, have the ability to backfill their position with other qualified physicians uh, in order to keep care going. So holiday travel is one reason why doctors expect that spike in COVID cases. Over the Thanksgiving holiday, PDX was the busiest it's been since the pandemic started. Health officials continue to say that any socializing outside your household right now comes with a risk. So they say if you do have COVID symptoms, you should go ahead and get tested and also give your close contacts a heads up. A lot of times in our COVID reporting, we'll mention things like I just said, doctors say this or health experts suggest that. And while most of those communities are on the same page right now, there are a few exceptions, including one doctor right here in Oregon who's on the record saying he doesn't wear a mask even inside his own clinic. Kyle Boshi tried to track him down. An Oregon doctor working at this family practice near Salem has refused to wear a mask while treating patients despite government orders to help limit the spread of COVID-19. My name is Steve LaTulip. I am a practicing physician in Dallas, Oregon. The doctor's controversial comments were captured on video during a Stop the Steal election rally in Salem on November 9th, then posted on YouTube by the Multnomah County Republican Party. I hate to tell you this, I might scare you, but I and my staff, none of us once wore a mask in my clinic. In the video, Dr. Stephen LaTulip admitted breaking COVID rules. In Oregon, an executive order says healthcare personnel are required to wear a face mask or face covering while in a healthcare office with limited exceptions. The Centers for Disease Control and Federation of State Medical Boards have similar guidance requiring masks to stop the spread of COVID-19. 
by helping prevent respiratory droplets from spreading. I petition all of you, please take off the mask of shame. It is a mask that is just designed to control you and to shut you down. Dr. LaTulip owns and operates Southview Medical Arts in Dallas. His name and contact information appear on the Salem Health website. When questions were raised, Salem Health distanced itself from the doctor explaining, Dr. LaTulip is not employed by Salem Hospital, nor does he provide care at any Salem Health hospital or clinic location. They said his name is simply listed in a directory of local doctors. Uh, I want to expose what I call corona mania. The doctor's defiant speech came to light after another controversy involving a health care worker. An oncology nurse at Salem Health was put on administrative leave after she posted a TikTok video where she bragged about violating the state's pandemic restrictions. On Tuesday, the Oregon Health Authority reported 24 COVID-related deaths, the highest single-day total of the pandemic. We tried to reach Dr. LaTulip for comment. His wife said after speaking with his lawyer, he might, but only if we spoke face-to-face at his clinic. I agreed face-to-face was fine, but outside, socially distanced, and preferably wearing masks. She hung up, and we haven't heard back. Kyle Aboshi, KGW News. Oregon Governor Kate Brown released her budget recommendations for the state. It's a plan heavy on pandemic relief, and it relies on the federal government to kick in a whole lot of money. KGW's Bryant Clerkley is live now with more details on the governor's plan. Good morning, Bryant. Good morning, Brenda, and the governor's plan involves more funding for housing and rental assistance, but it also involves some cuts that health care officials are not happy about. The budget puts 65 million more dollars into housing than the state has now. The governor says she'll ask the federal gov- government for 300 and 50 million in rent assistance. The budget also includes 20 million for homeowners assistance and an additional 250 million to develop more affordable housing. There are also cuts, including payments to hospitals. The Oregon Hospital Association is angry with the move, especially now when healthcare providers are working overtime. The governor says she's open to compromise, but cuts have to be made. Let me be very, very clear. This budget doesn't put enough money into our schools. It doesn't make the investments in public health we need. It's a budget built on sacrifice and hard choices. A couple other key items include $146 million to modernize the employment department's benefit delivery system so people don't wait months for unemployment checks. And $189 million is dedicated to wildfire wildfire recovery and preparedness. The budget does request $685 million in federal money for COVID testing and services to support the Oregon Health Plan. And the governor's budget proposal will go to the legislature, legislature when they reconvene in January. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much for all the information. Some tough news now to pass along this morning. We've learned the wife of Oregon politician and Salem oncologist Dr. Bud Pierce was killed in a car crash on the day he announced his second run for governor. Selma Pierce was a retired dentist and well-known community leader who ran for the Oregon House of Representatives. Police say she was hit and killed by an SUV on Dokes Ferry Road in Salem last night. It appeared Mrs. Pierce was in the road when she was hit, but at this point, we really don't know much else about that wreck. The driver, though, is cooperating with investigators. Her husband, Bud Pierce, ran for Oregon governor in 2016 and just yesterday announced he was going to run again in two years. In a post on Facebook, he said, quote, the glue of the Pierce family, an angel of a person, the only woman that I have ever loved, died this evening in a sudden and tragic accident. We cannot believe that she has left us, but we are comforted in the knowledge that she is with God and we will see her again. The House Republican leader, Christine Drazen, also released a statement reading in part, Selma dedicated her life to serving people. She touched the lives of thousands through volunteer dental work at at at-risk populations, service on local education foundations, and her and her husband's generous support of countless community organizations.
New information this morning about the man who was rescued at sea after his boat capsized in the Atlantic Ocean. Stuart B. finally arrived on dry land after being rescued Sunday. He went missing Friday. He is he survived rather by spending more than 30 hours clinging to part of his boat that was still above water before a cargo ship rescued him 86 miles off the Florida coast. B described his desperate survival. I hung on to a few floating cushions and unfortunately the boat did not sink, but I wasn't not totally, but I wasn't sure if it was going to. So I held on to the cushion and the boat. offshore was a needle in a haystack moment and it was truly amazing that the lookout ever found him. No kidding. Looks like uh, Tom Hanks and Castaway with that beard.